city in the Americas, founded in 1325. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Mexico City. Today, we've got another installment of the International Series, and it should be a good one, between the Denver Broncos and the Arizona Cardinals. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Well, the Denver offense ready to go again. You know, high expectations for this club in 2020 especially when you consider that they're coming off a run of missing the playoffs four straight years since their Super Bowl win in Super Bowl 50. So, Charles, it's a very, very hungry franchise. Oh, I'd say that this is a franchise that's starving because they're throwing three straight losing seasons as well. But I do think there are a lot of reasons for optimism because they've got the young... And the pressure will bring him down here. The Cardinals get home for the sack. A bad start there. A big loss on their first play from scrimmage. It's second down. Okay, Bart. And there are a couple points of interest right here, all right? Offensively, we see that they came out throwing the football, but maybe more importantly, the blitz that came defensively, they got right after it. And you were telling me pregame before we came on air, you think this is something we could see a lot. Yeah, there's no doubt about it because this is a unit that wants to play the game on their terms. They'll wind up getting 10 back there as it'll leave them with a third and five. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. And this is going to be incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. Deep for the Cardinals, Christian Kirk. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Cards will take over first and 10. Well, the Cardinals getting set to go here. And you know, a lot of folks this time of the year, Charles, they like to look around the NFL landscape, try to identify that sleeper team that's ready to make that next step. And there's a lot of people who are landing on the Arizona Cardinals to be in that conversation. Yeah, I'm not sure they're the sleeper team anymore. To me, they are woke right everybody's talking about them so they've got to go out and play to that level now and they have a chance because i thought they got better last year i didn't care what the record was but the rookie kyler murray at quarterback he spent this entire offseason reshaping his body and getting better he's gonna throw to deandre hopkins who they acquired from houston larry fitzgerald the old pro who's still around and Kenyon drake and they acquired him last year from Miami. Boy, did he run the football well. But if they're going to really, truly contend in the NFC West, they've got to get better on defense. That means they've got to complement what Chandler Jones brings off the edge. And they started by drafting Isaiah Simmons out of Clemson. And Buda Baker on that defense. Now the highest paid safety in the NFL with a contract that he signed back on August 24th. So the 14 yards actually takes him from 143 to the other for first and 10. Now on first down, Drake again. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Drake on the carry. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. From the 40 now on second down, Murray. That's going to be caught by Kirk. 12 yards there and a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. They get 25 there. First down, Arizona. Another Cardinals first down. First and goal at the three-yard line. First and goal from the three. They'll try and pound it in with Drake. And he fights his way in, not giving up. And it's a carpet 
touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Cardinals have taken the early lead. Well, you've got to like that start on both sides of the football. You force the three and out, and then you score on your first drive. Well, I know someone who doesn't like that start. Well, yeah, the other side. Yeah, they don't like that at all, right? <laughs> this is not the way it's supposed to be. But what you just described, that's team football. All right, when you get a three and out, you're supposed to take advantage of it on the offensive side of the ball. You said, thank you very much for getting us the rock. Let's put it in the end zone, and they did exactly that. Touchdown, here's Gonzalez on to kick it away. To return it, here's Deontay Spencer. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Shotgun snap to lock. He'll let this go deep for Sutton. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. But they certainly came out firing in this one. And while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. <laughs> to throw again. Lock into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 28, and he is going to get this one back to the 20-yard line. Lock pass. Intercepted. On first down, Drake. And they'll get this down to the 10. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. Well, there's someone who's running the football with a big smile on his face, and that's Kenyon Drake, because you remember last year he was in Miami wasn't getting many carries, not a lot of success, but in midseason, ended up in Arizona and became a huge weapon for the Cardinals. Eight touchdowns the second half of the season, utilized really well. And Fitzgerald has got it. Touchdown, Cardinals. Fitzgerald. Ten yards on the touchdown pass. And the Cardinals now adding on to their lead. The full team is involved in this game early, aren't they? Go down the field, score on offense, take the ball away on defense, and go right back and score again. You got to like the way that's working for them. That's exactly right. Touchdown, turnover, touchdown, two score lead. A little bit like you at breakfast this morning. I got to get this in. Yeah, perfect omelet. Dropped it. It's a little bit of a turnover. You went right back to and got that omelet and crushed it. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. You got to do what you got to do. Don't worry about your hands, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Touchdown, here's Gonzalez on to kick it away. On the return is Spencer. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Now whistles, and we've got a man down. A man down here following the kickoff. Well, he gets attempted to. They'll step aside. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And they're in an early hole. The first drive, they threw the interception. That led to a touchdown. So, decent-sized deficit early on. It is, but I think you hit the key words, early on. So, they have to decide, do we even need to change game plan? 
or do we just need to execute better and try and get back in this game? Now the first carry here for Phillip Lindsay. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Chandler Jones, a former All-Pro, in on the tackle. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. On second and nine, Locke. He'll find Lindsey here. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. No yardage to speak of whatsoever. Leads to a third down. So nothing there on the screen that time. That means all that great acting they tried on offense went for naught, didn't it? Because you have to try and influence them. Make them think that you're doing something else. Make them think that they can get to the passer by letting them by and then setting up the screen and getting downfield. Didn't happen at all. Give a lot of credit to the defense for not tumbling to that one. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They're definitely going to have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that'll move the ball downfield. Here's Sam Martin now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Fair catch called for in May, but now we'll have to see about the penalty. This is one of the dangers of going for the punt block. And you know before you even call going for the block, it's a risk-reward play. So many factors come into it. They went after it, and you know punters, what they do? They leave their leg up in the air, an extra count or two, hoping someone comes into contact. So a big break. The roughing the kicker called on fourth down leads to first and ten. Lock going to throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was trying to find Noah Fant, the tight end. That'll bring up second down. Charles, he doesn't seem to be particularly in tune with his receivers, just two for seven throwing the football, but he did seem really locked in before the game. Yeah, and that has to do with receivers sometimes. Sometimes the defenders knock them off their routes, and you're usually pretty precise. One, two, three, cut, balls out of his hands to the receiver. In this case, might be off by a half step either way. They've got to find a way to get back in sync. I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll take a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer, he just dropped the pass. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Screen pass to Lindsey. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much-needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. On first and 10, it's Lindsey. And he'll take this down for about four yards down to the 15. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out in the field for a long time. And that last run, they just cut right through them. Coming up on a second and six. Lock on the give. It's Lindsey. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. From the gun, it's Locke. 
Now they're staring at a fourth down as Arizona's defense does its job. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. The kick by McManus is good. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, Parker, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? McManus to kick it away. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 22. He starts by handing this off to Drake. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Running, it's Drake. Big Mike Purcell with a tackle. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. From the 36, Murray, and incomplete. The intended receiver there, Kenyon Drake, and it's third down. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Out of the gun, here's Murray. It's complete to Drake. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Here's the veteran punter Lee as he sends this one away. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. The Broncos' offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot. Pressure comes, and the Cardinals bring him down. Devon Kennard in there to get him. It's a loss of five. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. Here's Locke. This is the tight end fan. 
Finding room at the 30. And all the way up to the 35-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Noah Fant was a first-round pick in 2019, and he was picked because of his receiving skills. Had 40 catches in his rookie season for 562 yards. Did have two games where he topped 100 yards in each of those. Yes, he's still developing as a blocker, but that's not why he went in the first round. He went there for his ability to make big plays down the field. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. 36 yard line. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more more later on and unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37 two runs in a row but only two yards to show for it a one yard pickup brings up third and eight After one, a 14 to three ball game. Cardinals 14, Broncos three. The Broncos on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and eight. Block working out of the gun. Got an open man here, and it's KJ Hamler. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. His first catch, good for nine in the first down. 46 yard ball. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness is a premium for all of that now. Man open. He's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. A gain of six there on first. I know a lot of Denver fans are really excited about the possibilities for Cortland Sutton now that Drew Locke is entrenched as their starting quarterback. Remember, last season, the last five games with Locke as the guy in charge, the team went 4-1. and one. I think they'll only get better and better. As for the season, Cortland Sutton had 1,112 yards and six touchdowns with three different quarterbacks. Just put the ball in his vicinity, and he'll make a play. But when you go from second and four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. The Broncos on third down, two for five to this point. Here it's third and three. From the gun, block. This one complete to the running back, Lindsey. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. An effective seven-yard third-down conversion. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. He's got his big tight end fan. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard in its second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Operating from the gun. Lock. Left side here. That's the tight end fan. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Already a pair of third down conversions for them on this drive, but right now they need five yards on this third down try. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. They read zone coverage there and thought there was some space to send their guy right into the middle on a slant, hoping he would get lost. Instead, they read it quite well and closed quickly. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And did he have enough? He did. He kept it on line and managed to tuck it into the bottom right corner. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14-6 to now. 
These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. But here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Complete. For the last few seasons, it's almost been sport for us in the media to see if Larry Fitzgerald is going to call it quits and cap off what I believe is a Hall of Fame career. But now he's entered season number 17, second on the all-time receptions list. Just 171 catches behind Jerry Rice. And maybe he's found new life as he continues to pile up the big numbers. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Not too many more ideal situations at second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the gun, Murray. And this one caught by Max Williams. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. Seven yards there and a first down. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. Credit the sack to Von Miller. Tell me different ways can we say that Von Miller is an absolute nightmare to prepare for for any offense. An absolute dominant force on the defensive side of the ball. Double-digit sacks in seven of his nine seasons in the NFL. And when he finished the 2019 season, second in total sacks in NFL history among active players behind only Terrell Suggs. So the screen good for only two. Now it's third down. I wonder what was going through his mind when he got the play call. He just got sacked on the previous play. He knows they're coming after him again. A little bit of guts to stand in there, take the hit, and successfully complete the screen pass. Really well done. Murray with a third and long, and he hits Drake. Room to run inside the 40. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. It's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. And I believe that that gain on third and long changes things quite a bit because this would be a very long field goal. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it here. For the field goal, a 55-yard attempt. That's on target, but it's no good. He had it on line, but it came up just shy of the crossbar. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, he's got a big leg, and when everything comes together, he can certainly hit from long range. But this one's going to come up just a little bit short. A very good effort, though. Now they're set up nicely at the 45-yard line after the missed field goal from 55. 
Lock now on first down. A pass for Sutton is intercepted. Picked off by the rookie Isaiah Simmons. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Intercepted. The Cardinals take over. They'll run on first down. Drake. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. Taken no doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. On second and nine, Murray has got it to Williams. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. Rolling to his right. And now he's going to use his legs. The improv on the scramble there gets him six and it'll be second down. And there's the beauty of Kyler Murray because we all know he can get it done through the air. Terrific right arm, and nowadays we don't even talk about his height anymore. He's shown that he can see downfield and make throws, but he also possesses wide receiver speed. He can call his own number or scramble and turn it into a big play as well. Kyler Murray, a dual threat at the quarterback position. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. Murray able to connect with Christian Kirk. And the Cardinals push further out in front. Great corner out there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. And he'll bang that one through. Makes the score Cardinals 21, Broncos 6. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. And Denver getting set to take the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling. Because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. Corey Peters there to bring him down. I think they want to start getting back into this game, it behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Coming up on second and seven. Block now to throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact. But in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. The Broncos on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and seven. From the gun, block. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. He was trying to get that one out to his running back out of the backfield, but that one was red and timed perfectly, and they were able to break it up. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for Denver.
On the return is Kirk. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The football going back over to Arizona now. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Sliding out of the pocket. He'll try and run it. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. Second and four. Shotgun now for Murray. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. And DeAndre Hopkins with another catch. And let's face it, when Arizona made this trade, there had to be no one happier than quarterback Kyler Murray, who had been pushing his management to draft his college teammate C.D. Lamb out of Oklahoma. But when they made the trade for DeAndre Hopkins, they didn't need to do that anymore. This guy's an all-pro receiver. He's been the top three in receptions the last two seasons. And now with Larry Fitzgerald already there, and you add DeAndre Hopkins, the possibilities, endless for the Arizona Cardinals in the passing game. First down, Murray. Open man is Kirk, complete. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Brings up nice catch there by Christian Kirk. Had 709 yards and three touchdowns in the 2019 season. I expect those numbers to continue to climb. This is a guy who can play in the slot, play outside, but the number one thing about him, absolute explosiveness, especially after he catches the ball downfield. If you don't make the tackle right there, he's going to take it a long way. And down inside the 15 he goes. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. First and 10. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. They'll roll him out right. He'll run it. And he will score. Touchdown, Cardinals. Kyler Murray on his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns. And the Cardinals will extend their lead. Yes, indeed. Touchdown, Kyler Murray. You remember as a rookie, four rushing touchdowns. But he's one of those players who's not just quick, but awfully fast. Had 12 rushing touchdowns at Oklahoma during his Heisman Trophy winning season in 2018. Expect him to expand on using his legs in the future. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. On the return is Spencer. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Set to take over. The Broncos' offense trots back out. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you got to figure, if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for a sack. Now the 
Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Denver's offense ready to go again. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk this is a big decision here. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. The cards going nickel. An extra defensive back out there now on third down. Operating from the gun. Block. Got a man complete. It's Hamler. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. The 44-yard line. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. On first and 10, here's Locke. He'll dump this one off to Lindsey. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. Second down and three. Locke looks to throw it again. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. He was looking to get it to Philip Lindsay there, and it's third and short. Isaiah Simmons there defensively. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Faking the give to Lindsay. Here's Locke. He's got a man. It's Sutton that's complete. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals 28. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So here's the Cardinals offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Seven yards on the play, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and three at the 31-yard line. Working with a second and three. From the gun, Murray completes it to Fitzgerald. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time. Forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. On second and 11 now. Murray. Well, this is caught by Williams. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 40. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. 
When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Show a first and 10 now in Denver territory, right at the 40. Now a draw play with Drake, and he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty, but when it doesn't, Oh, it could be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. Second and 11 at the 41. <laughs> Operating from the gun, Murray. It's Williams on the catch. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 19. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. I'd have to say they're feeling like they are in rhythm right now. Things are in sync, aren't they? Team's winning, got a nice little margin on the scoreboard, completing some passes, and they just completed another one for a first down there to the tight end. Murray has it knocked loose, fumble. The Broncos say they have it, they do! Block and the Broncos gonna come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Following the fumble recovery, it's Locke. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. On first down. It's Lindsay, and this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Well, they certainly haven't been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. They got just pin their ears back and get after him now. From the 41, Lock out quickly to Judy. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 45-yard line. Give them 14 on that one and a first down. Nice catch there by the rookie out of Alabama, Jerry Judy. And I am fired up to see the chemistry develop between he and Drew Locke, their quarterback. And in addition, Cortland Sutton, their Pro Bowl wide receiver from last year. This might be the best pair of receivers the Broncos have had since Demarius Bay Bay Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. This should be fun for Bronco fans to watch. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Here's a give to Lindsey. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Lindsey. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. I know people see Philip Lindsay's role in Denver is changing a bit with the arrival of Melvin Gordon, but I think Gordon's going to be more of an enhancement for Lindsay. Maybe he won't carry it as often, but now he'll be much more effective as a two-headed monster in the backfield. Both of them can run it inside, get to the perimeter, and catch the ball out of the backfield and move the sticks. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive here, second and 11. Now a handoff for Lindsey. Four yards on the pickup there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Ready, 
from the gun. It's Locke. And Sutton hauls it in over the middle. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. First and goal at the seven now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off, but a nice game there for a first down. Lindsay on the carry. Five yards, a good run there, and now second and goal. And when you look at the geography we're staring at, this part of the field, don't you always think of big backs carrying the football, bruisers trying to pound it in? Instead, look at a little more of a scat back type, and he's trying to make it happen. Yeah, they went with the elusive, slippery guy. Couldn't get in there, though. Maybe anticipating a blitz, and they jumped. Yeah, and if we saw it, you know that they saw it. The bad guys might have been coming on that play. Had to pick them up, and they jumped. Things made a little more difficult after the false start as they try again on second and goal. Shotgun snap to lock. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. What a job by this defense all game long. They've come together and really said, no one's crossing our goal line, and they're definitely not going to start right now. You can just see the dejection. Feel like nothing is working offensively. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Now Locke. And this is caught by Sutton. Touchdown, Broncos. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Broncos cut into that lead. That's a score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. He hits the big target for the two-point try. <laughs> Defenses hate those guys, especially around the goal line. It's hard to decide who you're going to put on him. Are you going to put a smaller corner on him? Or are you going to put a safety who doesn't have maybe the same coverage skills? How about a linebacker? He may have the size, but he's not used to really covering in space. That's why the tight end gives you such a great advantage when you're throwing the football. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Now this will make it into the end zone. And this will be a touchback, no return from Isabella. The Cardinal offense takes back over. Their lead down from 21 to 14, but still sitting at a great spot. Up two scores here in the third quarter. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Out of the gun, he'll throw. That's going to be caught by Kirk. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. First and, ten. and now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. We're getting a sense that the momentum of this game is changing since the break. Nice play there, and this D is fired up. 35-yard line. Behind the chain, second and 12. Out of the gun, here's Murray. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. So it looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. 
from the gun, Murray. That's complete to Williams out of the backfield. And they stop him up short of the first down as they get him at about the 43. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. The drive will commence with a run by Lindsey. And he's able to get him a small cushion before being taken down at the five, a gain of three. The tackle made. That is and that's frustrating for a defense because they've got them pinned down deep. And on the first play, they gave up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down, that's what they talk about us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Brings up third and four. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Locke working out of the gun. Got a man. It's Judy complete. And he's taken down, but able to get this up to the 20-yard line. The second year man locked to the rookie Judy for a Bronco first. <laughs> They'll run on first down. Lindsey. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Operating from the gun, Lock. He'll find Lindsey here, and he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He was looking for the rookie Jerry Judy there. And it's second down. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Throwing again. Lock. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive, as this is third and ten. Again, it's Locke. And Locke throws another one. It's intercepted. Picked off by Byron Murphy, and he will score. Touchdown, Cardinals. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. Gonzalez to add the PAT. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Makes the score Cardinals 35, Broncos 14.
Same so they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. On the return is Spencer. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Spencer. So the Broncos coming out now. And that last pick six may have been the backbreaker as they now face a three-score deficit in the fourth quarter. They need points quickly. Lock and the Broncos going to come up first and 10 at their own 24. Lock trying again after the pick six. On the slant, completes to Sutton. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. It's second and inches at the 34-yard line. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. From the gun, Locke. This one complete to the running back, Lindsey. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. That was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down. Let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. On first down, Locke. He's got his big tight end, Fan. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now you can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Again, they'll throw with Locke. Got a man open, it's Sutton. And they're gonna have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 44-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. First and 10. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they wanna do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Second and six at the 40-yard line. Second and six. Now lock again. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 26. Give them 14 on that one and a first down. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. The quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Now a first and 10 at the 11. On first down, it's Lindsey. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Sometimes in the run game, you can make the argument that quickness beats size. And how about the example right here? A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. To throw it is lock. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. That time he was looking for Jerry Judy, and it'll bring up third down. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Operating from the gun. Lock to the end zone, but it's incomplete. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs, able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. 
Now look at this, fourth and 12, and they're going to line up to go for it. They'll go for it. It's Locke. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. The Broncos unable to convert here on fourth. And the Cardinal defense is going to get the football back. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. They'll start the drive with Drake. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again, second and ten. Shotgun now for Murray. It's complete to Drake. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. Good route. Good pickup for first down yardage. And that is a tough one to cover. The angle route because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first. And that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. This defense, tough to run against. And those linebackers, they'll go side to side up the field, and there they get them for no gain. If you can't get linemen upfield to the second level to occupy them, they have a field day just running to the football and putting ball carriers on the ground. Not many yards after contact when they wrap up like that. DeAndre Hopkins, the pro bowler, the intended receiver, and it's third down. How good has he been throwing the football, though? And despite that incompletion, that's just the third time he's been off target this entire game. And Brandon, I've been on the other side of this equation, trying to defend a guy who's been this hot, and it chips away at your confidence. And when you're not confident when you're trying to defend, it makes you slower to the football, and it leads to more completions for them. He may try and run for this. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. And partner, I would guess that in his headset, he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return, and the Broncos take over, first down and 10. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, that, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. Now a second down. Down and six. Boy, and now they can't even get a playoff. That's going to set them back five yards. Second down, here's Locke. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. That time he was looking for Jerry Judy. Third down here. 
Uh, at this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Throwing his lock on third down. He's got a man. It's Sutton that's complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. The play began back at the 23, and they pick up 23. Well, even after all those interceptions, he's not deterred, still confident to go deep at work there. I think all the old rules about playing that position still apply. If things go wrong, you still act like you're the best player out on the field. You still carry that supreme arrogance with you and continue to fire the ball. I've seen guys have games like this, and this is where you find out if you're great or not. Can you overcome some interceptions and still lead your team to victory? One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. Throwing again on second down. Lock. And he's going to lose a yard or two, taken down behind the line. The linebacker Jordan Hicks flying in there for the sack. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. From the gun on third down, Locke. And he's going to have the hook up to Sutton. Lock and Sutton on the connection there for a Denver first down. First and 10 at the 41 yard line. <laughs> Throwing on first down is Lock. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. It's a gain of nine yards, and that'll make it second and short. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit, but get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him, and after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Locke looks to throw it again. This is the tight end fan. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Give him three yards there on the first down pickup. Clock management definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Lock now on first down. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. To throw again, Lock completes it to Fant on the right side. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Five yards, now it's third and five. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The last play on the completion got them half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. Looking for the end zone. And yeah, this is caught by Sutton. Touchdown, Broncos. Cortland Sutton, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Broncos get a bit closer. 
I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah, yeah, you know, you got feel right. Exactly. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Cardinals' hands team able to secure the football. Onside kick. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. They'll run on first down. Drake. And he'll be pulled down as a penalty flag will rain in as well. And that would appear to be a face mask. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and ten. From the gun, it's Drake. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And a few kneel downs should come very close to finishing this one off, depending on whether or not we see any defensive timeouts. They still have two, but using them would just be prolonging what's really already been decided. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. He'll buy some time right. He's going to take off with it. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Here's second and nine. Murray a give, this is Drake. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. A nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. Right back to Drake. And they're able to corral him right around the eight, and that's short of the first down. Call it a gain of five. Fourth down now. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. This to make it a three-score game late. Gonzalez's kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen. And you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Aren't I, though?
After the field goal, here's Gonzalez to kick it off. On the return is Spencer. And they'll have very good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. And Denver getting set to take the field. They're down big here late. I don't know, you just one last drive here for pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's Make get out of here and do something some <laughs> other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Cortland Sutton, first-time Pro Bowler. He was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. We've seen that the deep balls their game plan all afternoon but they've had trouble hooking up on it unable to successfully find the end zone over the top so line of scrimmage still the 39 on second and 10 throwing again lock goes back to sudden this time completes it and they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done a game there of 21 yards Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. On first and ten, here's Locke. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. It'll be a gain of six, and it'll make it a second down. At the 34-yard line, a six-yard pickup brings up second and four. Second down at four. One final try for Locke. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one. Certainly defensively, stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, and continue to get better at what they do, but they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say adios from Mexico City.